Right, one day is Thursday, November 4, 2022, and this is the week and charts. I'm sure we thank all you guys and girls for attending. Once again, the numbers are getting bigger and bigger, so somebody's finding it. I, I usually don't remember till halfway through the day, if I'm that lucky, to uh, put out the uh, post to my website on it. But if you are watching this on YouTube and you want to participate live, and believe me, it makes for such a better show if you come in here and and participate for instance today is the third and i must have just said it was a fourth see that helps so the show's already getting better <laughs> now that we've got more people participating but if you want to participate and you can't find the link on my website go to daveleonard.com slash webinar and register even if the link is old which it likely will be and you'll be registered for all the shows all right what are we talk about well obviously current market conditions we'll get there in a few minutes your questions on trading your favorite stock and crypto picks and we'll get focus on well I wasn't sure what to cover today, and I just was so slammed with everything else. I never could get any get much traction. And so finally, I just put out a post. It's like, duh, well, what do you guys want to talk about? And you, you guys sent me a couple of questions. And I did want to recap some of the things I said earlier this week about using the 220 EMA breakout system in crypto. There's a disclaimer screen. As you know, you can lose money trading, or as I often sum it up, all predictions are about the future, and a lot of stuff can happen between now and then. Uh, hold off on the stock picks uh, for now, and when we get to the live charts, uh, feel free to ask all you want. And when we get, as soon as we get the crypto, start asking. And then if you don't mind, hit a uh, carriage return after each one, or enter, so we could just do one at a time and I can delete them. All right, one thing I wanted to carry over from my Trading Simplified show is the mystery charts. And I wanted to, this mystery chart came up after I did my show, and the mystery charts usually come straight from my trading service. Occasionally, it'll come straight from Facebook or something we talked about in Facebook before the trigger. And what I'm doing over in the Trading Simplified show, although I haven't had any show in a while because we had any triggers in a while. If you're on a trading service, you know this. You've been forced to be really, really patient. But what I do is I show the chart before the trigger. And then I follow up on it. And then that's becoming part of the 100 of my my next 100 trade series. And if you watch some of the Trading Simplified shows, that'll make sense. So this will become one of my next 100 trade trades. And this is the mystery chart for this week. And this comes this week comes straight from a trading service, as it normally does. And the entry and the stop are there for a risk of 475. So 421 shares, I would just round that down in this particular case. And that's based on 100K accounts. This spreadsheet is available on my website under members resources. And I think this part is not behind the firewall. Yes, Mark, you 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 guessed it correct. Good for you, Mark. <laughs> anyway, he solved the mystery. All right, so what do we have? Well, we've got a really nice uptrend here. And notice it's kind of thrust, pullback, thrust, pullback, thrust, pullback, rinse and repeat. And what's more impressive is in more recent times, it's began to persist higher. It's just a good looking stock and it's pullback. I actually wouldn't mind a little bit deeper pullback, but initially I called it a TKO based on this move here, this little knockout move. If you sort of combine the bars, it would probably make for a prettier TKO like this high and this low. So maybe a three day bar chart might even look better. So there's parameters, entries there, stop is down there. Parameters are a little tight, you know, looking at it in this particular chart, could probably be a little bit wider. So I might widen those out just a smidge if it doesn't trigger tomorrow with an IPT up here. So that's the mystery chart for this week. I, did, I wasn't able to show that one in the Trading Simplified show. So I wanted to show it somewhere before it triggered other to my private clients, of course. All right, I wanna take a few minutes and revisit the 220 EMA breakout system in crypto. And the reason I say 220 is because that's what it originally was back in 1996, when it was first published in Stocks and Commodities Magazine, and I'm beginning to date myself here. And just FYI, I know I've said this before, but for the new people here, and, and I, I do see some new people, so that's awesome is I wanted to create a simple system or, or basically prove that a simple system could work in something that trended fairly well, at least from my perspective, way back in the day. 
such as Japanese yen. Now, Forex, a little tricky to trade, but this was a simple little system and it did quite well in Japanese yen. And in more recent times, I've been looking at it in crypto. Now, I wouldn't trade this mechanically. I don't do anything mechanically, by the way. Although I do have some mechanical systems such as the TFM 10% system, which helped to get me out of the market. But I do recommend you look for maybe like a big fat base, kind of like Bitcoin had a really, really fat base and then it made a nice little 230 EMA. So this system is one of the systems that will get you in as early as possible. Bow ties will work, but bow ties could have a little lag in them. We're going to talk a lot about bow ties in a few minutes. And first thrust can work too, but th but sometimes you might be waiting for your break, your pullback with the first thrust. So this is something that gets you in really early. Again, don't trade it mechanically, but if something has a really nice big fat base and you, you're thinking, man, I, I, I don't want to bottom fish, but I do want to own some Bitcoin or Ethereum or whatever, then this could be a good little setup. It's so damn simple, it's amazing, it really is. You must have at least two bars of Landry light. That means two bars where the lows are greater than moving the average. And you're gonna enter above the high plus a little wiggle room and stop out at the 30 EMA. Now I've covered this earlier this week, so I'm gonna rush through this quickly. But if you have any questions, feel free to ask. So bar one, bar two of Landry light, look down below bar one, bar two. As I said ad nauseum, but somebody's gonna ask, this is not the magnitude or the distance that the price is from moving average. It was simply the number of bars. So way down here, Ethereum was underneath that EMA for about 40 bars or so. If I, if I can, it's hard to tell this little thing in here. But anyway, so now we have seven bars, at least when this uh, screen was captured of Landry light. But the system only requires two, and that's why I can get you in pretty quick. You're not waiting for a moving average to do something, and moving average can have some lag to it, which, believe it or not, is actually okay. There are times when a little lag is necessary, and it actually helps you to avoid whipsaw. But anyway, so bar one, bar two, enter about the two bar high, which was the bar one high in this particular case, plus a little wiggle room. So entry, a plausible entry would have been right around there, and that's about where you would have gotten long if you were trading this particular system. Now, Bitcoin, and this chart's a couple of days old, but we're gonna look at the live charts in just one second. I don't think it's triggered yet. It didn't, as when I was putting these slides together this morning, it hadn't. Bar one, bar two, I, in fact, I know it hasn't, and bar one, bar two down here, and on this particular chart, just so you can get them familiar with the indicator, or as I like to call them, illustrator, just illustrates what's already in a chart. This little green here, if you can't read it, it says seven. So if you were to count this, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven bars above the EMA. Now you did have a signal back here, and I've been saying it failed miserably, but maybe, just maybe, depending on where you've gotten in, you might have been able to trail a stop higher and break, and break even maybe, or even get a little bit out of it and scratch out. But trading mechanically, you would wait for it to come all the way back into the 30 EMA to exit. Okay, so trading mechanically, that would have been a bad signal. But again, we're not taking every signal. But if you have a nice base like this, especially after a failed signal, and especially after green and red, green and red, green and red, when when the market's chopping back and forth, okay, red for a while means a downtrend, and a while a good a while would be 10 bars. And that's why I have these reference lines in here at plus or minus 10. And you could set those to your liking if you're using ACP. Speaking of liking, if you're liking this video, then like it. And if you don't like it, then go have no fun somewhere else. <laughs> and if you like it, this plugin will be available for you in ACP. I don't get any compensation. The plugin is free, but I do have a relationship with stockcharts.com. And so if you click on that, you'll get the plugin for free. I keep threatening to charge some money for it, but so far that hasn't happened. Now, bar one, bar two, okay, above the high plus a wiggle room. So a plausible entry right around, let's say 21,250, just kind of eyeballing it, okay? If Landry is a system available on Thinkorswim, available on stockcharts.com. Uh, Landry Light is available in Metastock. It's available for free in Metastock. It's available for um, 
my business model is to give everything away for free and make a forwarded volume. I'm kind of stuck in the 90s, huh? Back in the internet days, uh, reminds me of the South Park. Step one, collect the underpants. Step three, make money. Uh, anyway, no, it's 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 in Metastock. Yeah, Trading View, somebody wrote some code for it that was pretty good. I think it had a few little, it uh, needed a little tweaking if memory serves. I, I don't use it in Trading View or haven't used it in Trading View. And uh, occasionally I use it at ACP. I, I mostly use it for teaching purposes to illustrate what I'm looking for with the Landry Light, but I have found myself looking at it more and more. And what's cool about the ACP version, which you'll see in one second, especially like with the bow ties, it can give you a red light, yellow light, or like a green light, yellow light, red light, a red light, yellow light, green light, however you want to look at it, uptrends, downtrends, to help keep you in the right side of the market. And I'll, I'll point that out later. Now, bar one, bar two, and doji coin or doggy coin, as I call it, bar one, bar two, two bars of Landry light, Entry above the two bar high plus a little wiggle room. So plausible entry right about there. And you can't even see how many zeros that is. Probably, I don't know, <laughs> zero, zero, something. So that would have been a plausible buy. Now, what did I do? Well, I forgot to look at my own stuff. And this is one of the frustrating things sometimes is sometimes even though you've been at this for a long time, you forget to look at certain things and certain patterns and i've been a little lax in my crypto just because crypto hasn't been moving up until now of course so it wasn't until somebody pointed out in my group and it was john z he said uh, put the shirt back on i bought a, a hodl shirt just for s and g's with the shiba dog on it the shiba coin back when shiba was running and i think john z printed money and she back then and so did i and I totally missed this 2.30 EMA and Elon, E-L-O-N, just because I, I wasn't paying attention. And that's that's a perverse nature of the markets. You stop paying attention and it takes off. And that kind of dovetails into what I'm seeing lately, like with my trading service. I'm boring everybody to death because I'm like, no setups, no setups, no setups. Oh, here's a setup. Oh, it didn't trigger. Here's another setup. Oh, it didn't trigger. Here's another setup. Didn't trigger. No setups, no setups, no setups. But it's okay to be bored when the market is chopping back and forth, and it's a little harder sometimes to, to get in some really good shorts after the market has had the big spill like it had. We shorted earlier this year, market had a big retrace, we made a little money here and there, then it took us out of the shorts. And shorts are just a pain in the ass. I've got to quit saying that. I know it's kind of like love. If you love shorts, they'll love you. If you can't be in a trend you want, love the trend you're in, right? But shorts are a little bit tougher. Anyway, and it's okay to sit on your hands. So that's my orders. As you can see, I got in a little bit late. I got in at 13 cents, and I flipped out at 15 cents on a lot of these coins, especially these volatile ones like this, these, these SHYT, these shit coins. I just said, um, I just put in a 20% initial profit target. And that makes the math a lot easier as opposed to doing a lot of volatility calculations. So I did exit half here where you could see, no, I got in here, sorry. I got in late and then 20% higher, I flipped out. And I know it's come back in a little bit. My stop is a little loose on that, not quite to break even. So, so far so good. Okay, I see pullback Dave Landry indicator in trading view. Oh, okay, cool, I was not, a, Wow, I'm I'm impressed. That's cool. I'd like to check that out, John. Thanks for pointing that out. That's cool. Awesome. Present an article on Landry Light, what stocks, commodities, magazine, and community will submit coding to multiple platforms. Um, I did that already in 1996, and uh, I'm sure you could find some. Um, oh, you talk about a Landry Light code. Oh. Uh, yeah, I could do that, I suppose. I, I don't know when, you know, in my spare time. <laughs> I'm in negotiation with the Chinese. It's like I have, I was bitching to myself and anyone who listened about how little spare time I have, although I do love what I do, don't get me wrong. And uh, the Chinese are after me and, and they're so damn demanding, darn demanding, I should say. But I totally understand where they're coming from. They're putting on a show and they need me to help promote it and do a bunch of other things. And so, it's not just that they're demanding, there's just a lot of other stuff going on. And it's also a lot of demands I put on myself because there's a lot going on. But anyway, 
but yeah, maybe in my spare time, I could um, do an article for um, stocks and commodities. I think I still have some connections over there. Although I think some of the, one of my connections went over to stock charts, but I could ask her over there. All right, so the question was, earlier today, I'm like, okay, what do y'all want me to talk about? And uh, a couple of you guys, Brian and Gio, piped in, and we'll go with Geo's first. Is there any meaningful rally possible without the heavyweighted tech sector participating? Well, one thing I was thinking about, and as I'll say in a few minutes, there's probably somebody better than me out there to answer such a question. But is this a need to know or a need to know type of question? And I think it's a little bit of both, and I'll flesh that out. So we take a look at the S&P 500, and I just did a Google and I found it on this website that I have listed below. And it's like, George is right, it's 26%. Look at that big old slice of that pie. So the majority of the S&P is considered information technology. And probably some of those other areas could be technology too. So that was kind of shocking to me. I, I had no idea that the weightings were that high in tech. Now, what about the NASDAQ? Speaking of technology, I thought it'd be kind of fun. And this is, I know you want to party with me, <laughs> type of things. So what's the breakdown in the NASDAQ? Well, half of the NASDAQ is almost half, 47%. That big red piece of the pie over here is technology. So to answer George's question, yeah, you probably will need some technology to put us in a bull market. Now, one thing I want to look at quickly before I flesh out some random thoughts on all this is the NASDAQ composite obviously is in a pretty serious downtrend. It's a little bit uglier than the P's. And if you look down here, it's 30 something percent at its lows was 30 something percent off its 52 week closing high, which at that point was probably this close here, or maybe this close here. This, yeah, it's probably off this close here. But what I found interesting as I looked at this was the 50 weeks, we've gone 50 weeks without a new closing high. Now, remember in the TFM 10% system, I've been telling you for a couple of weeks that, hey, we're at week 41, 42, 43, without a new closing high. And what's gonna happen is once you get to 50, that buy line is gonna start to drop. Now the buy line here, I just have it set at 100 to show you the 50 week closing high, but the actual buy line will be set with parameters of 90 comma 50, and that's gonna be 90% or 10% below that high, however you wanna look at it. But it's kind of interesting. So if we had the buy line in here, the buy line will begin or would have began to drop on the NASDAQ. Now, S&P 500, I'm using 10%, which is a really good round number. I didn't do the testing on the NASDAQ. The NASDAQ, a little bit more volatile. It might require a slightly bigger percent. Remember the TFM 10% system for the sales to get you out of the way is a 10% drop from the 50-week closing high. Okay, any close below that? And close below the 50-week moving average. Both of those things happen, you get out the way. And to my amazement, it has got you out, it's gotten you out of the way, he tried to say, right before some really bad stuff has happened in the markets. So there's your 50 week closing high, which is kind of interesting that it's starting to move forward and begin to ratchet down. So that's the 50 week closing high is now probably this bar here. And that's it's starting to come down. So I think that's kind of cool. So it takes time for a bear market to work. And now we've had almost 50 weeks of bear market. Well, at least 50 weeks of bear market in the in the um, NASDAQ. Now, obviously, you didn't know it was a bear market until it dropped, what? Uh, what's a media call a bear market? 20%. But in hindsight, you could say, well, that's when the bear market began. Now, getting back to George's question, a rally without tech. Well, I'm going to make an uneducated guess and say no. Because if you look at the weightings in those indices, there's so much tech, 27% or over 25% in the NASDAQ, over a quarter percent, quarter 
of the net, I'm, I'm sorry, over a quarter of the S&P 500 is technology, which I did not know that. So I do think we'll need tech to rally to answer George's question, but I think that's something that's probably better answered by a market historian and or someone with broad-based technical, like a broad-based technical analyst, somebody like Dave Keller, who was the lead technical analyst, he was a head honcho over at Fidelity when it came to charts. And so he knows a lot more about these things. And, and I would actually recommend you submit uh, the question to him to see if he could maybe cover it. And he's probably got some cool things to, um, to show, but uh, probably not. Now, one thing that I learned a few years back, and I, I find it quite interesting, and I never thought about it. It's like, what's our biggest winner right now in the portfolio during this bear market, okay? It's a coal stock. And it was down at four bucks a share, 489, but who's counting? And now it's 20 something bucks a share. And so when it was down at four bucks and change, or let's just say five bucks round numbers, it had based out and gone sideways for a while. It was just off of these multi-year lows, maybe all-time lows. So yeah, not that I would pull up a fundamental, I wouldn't know a fundamental that hit me in the ass, but not that I would pull up the fundamentals, but I'd be willing to say, you go back and look at it way back then, it probably had some quote unquote value to it at five bucks a share. So value becomes momentum and momentum becomes value. So coming out of this bear market, to answer your question, we probably can't come out the bear market without tech, but the good news is tech will probably lead us out. So by going around this big circle, I've kind of answered the question in that tech being value or quickly becoming value, you saw that 30 something percent haircut, right? And then if you look on an individual basis, some is issues, especially like semiconductors, have been annihilated. So those semiconductors, believe it or not, will actually become value. And those two things are kind of inverse to each other. And I meant to check, get his name. I, I always forget his name of <laughs> these presentations, but this comes from um, a gentleman who was who's with Dorsey Wright and is part of NASDAQ.com and, or the NASDAQ exchange. And he did a presentation in San Francisco, I think before or after me, uh, a few years back, a couple of years back before the pandemic kicked in. All right, so need to know or need to know, I would let the setups drive you. I wasn't, even, I, wasn't I just saw energy on my chart when, when I bought that coal stock and recommended it, recommended it, then bought it. And I didn't realize it was a coal stock. I thought it was an energy stock. I just saw energy. I'm like, okay, that's fine. Energy's bottoming out. Energy's starting to rally off of lows. Energy's looking pretty good. I think I'll buy the stock and recommend this stock. I recommended it first and then I bought it. Okay. <laughs> I bought a lot of it or enough of it. Well, it's never enough, but it's a winner, right? Anyway, the point I'm trying to get to, and believe it or not, I have one, is let the setups drive you. So here I was buying a value stock and me being a big momentum player, I saw some momentum in this value stock, didn't care it was a value, didn't, could give two flips that it was a value stock, but I let the setups drive me. I let the database tell me what to do. So I don't think you, you need to know this. I think it's something that's kind of interesting, slightly academic, but I do think that Technology will lead us out. So maybe start watching technology, but you might be waiting a while. All right. Thanks, Dave. I was thinking about that. All right, good. We're on the same page here. Looks like they tried to do a bow tie, but it's not quite right. Who tried to do a bow tie? Oh, you're talking about a trading, uh, trading view? Okay, so the other question was, what makes a good bow tie? set up besides multi-year lows. And uh, some of the newer guys in the group threw out some bow ties or, or at least one. And I didn't like them because like it because it wasn't off of like multi-year lows. 
So in addition to that, he wants to know what else am I looking for in good bow ties? Well, let's start off with what I found tonight. And I wanna pose a question to see what you guys think first, before I chime in. Is this a good bow tie? What do you think? Talk amongst yourselves. <laughs> Let me know. I'll, uh, I'll clean my desk while I wait. I'll check on the piece. Anyone? Bueller? Come on, guys. <laughs> Looks pretty good. All right. A little loose. Okay. No. All right. Okay. We got one vote good, one vote a little loose, and one vote no. Good answers. All three are actually good answers. So, first of all, a little loose. Okay. I like a nice, tight fulcrum on a bow tie. We got one more yes. But it's okay. It's not. It's not bad. It really isn't. It really did. It really kind of jumped out at me tonight. And you could see as who pointed that out. A little loose. Craig pointed out. Yeah, Craig's right. It is a little loose. But it did make the transition fairly quickly. Three to four bars, ideally. Okay. And sometimes I like to see this go from red to green. This is just. 10 less than 20, less than 30, and green is 10 greater than 20, greater than 30, and this is somewhere in between, okay? A no man's land sort of in between. But this is a cool thing. It's like red, no bueno, yellow, hmm, it might be, the trend might be changing, and then green, okay, it's starting to look pretty good. Yeah, you're getting ahead of me, Craig. Craig's pointing out that's a nice cup and handle. I agree with you on that. All right, so. Here's the thing, the other thing that I'm seeing from a positive standpoint, that thrust from lows from six bucks and change to eight bucks and change or less than six bucks to eight bucks, whatever it is, it's fairly substantial. It's like, a, I should have did the math in my head, but it's probably 40% run, which is a decent run coming off of lows, okay? And then it's got an okay pullback. Uh, bow tie just needs a one bar pullback. And as I'll kind of flesh out here in a few minutes, I'm not a, a huge stickler about the way the pullback looks on a bow tie. This, the, the setup is really based on the fact that you have a trend transition and you got to get in at the first signs of a correction. You don't just jump in because it's going up. Although I guess technically if you were trading, if you really wanted in on something, then maybe the 230 EMA will get you in a little earlier than a bow tie. But you know, anything that gets you in early is likely going to spit you out as a false signal. So there's there's always a trade-off. It didn't fan out quickly. I agree. Okay. But it it fanned out pretty good. Pretty good. Okay. All right, let's keep going. Now. This is the same chart. How do you like it? How do you like it now? It's pulled back to confluence. I think the pullback's okay. I'm not too worried about the pullback here. All right, you guys seeing see anything here? You still like it? Those who liked it, still like it? Weekly chart caution. Yes, George is on to something. This is not a weekly chart, but yeah, you could put a, you could certainly plot a weekly chart. Well, notice what's happening here. And this is first kiss at the daylight. I like that. I forgot about that. That's a that's you know what? I'm glad you brought that up. I need to bring bring that up in uh, maybe my next stock chart show where I introduce a lot of the Dave Landry speak. <laughs> Excuse me, I speak Dave Landry. <laughs> Excuse me, sir. I speak Jive. Anyway, there's a mountain of overhead supply, or overhead resistance. Kind of reminds me of the, the brothel over the hardware store joke. And hardware store didn't make it. It's too much overhead. Uh, anyway, I digress. But you can see there's a lot of trading here. Now, remember, the charts shows that shows where the trading was, right? So there are people behind these bars that have likely maybe bottom fished or bought this stock doing this consolidation. 
and they're probably looking to get out at break even. So you would likely run into trouble really, really, really quick if you took this setup. And this is why I didn't show it tonight. And this is the this is kind of the the mental masturbation I go through every night by going through 2000 charts. I'm like, flip, 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 flip. Yes, this looks great. Oh, no. You know, it's kind of like the, I've been watching some Ozzy Man lately. It's like, yeah, nah. You know, it's kind of like a bummer. And you guys are like, what's he doing over there? He's not giving me any setups. And it's like, well, I'm busting my ass trying to find you setups. But because you know what? If, if I find a setup that goes up 500% and I recommend it, which means that I have to take it, then I make 500% too. But guess what? I'm not going to take something so I can lose money so you could have a setup. Draw a base works. Draw a base works? Okay, you kind of lost me on that one. Is that a typo? In a downtrend and resistance. Yeah, lots of resistance. And if you carry that forward, as you can see, shortly after you're triggering in, the people will be the people who bought back here will likely be looking to get out of break even. So yeah, good job to everybody who called resistance on that. Yeah, it's an okay cup and handle. We'll get to cup and handle one second. Okay, as uh, the question was besides major lows, well, major lows is one of the first things I really look for. So I just wanna bring that up and make sure the longer the better. I think it's something like these like coal stocks and energy stocks we got in 2020. 20, I think it was one of them I was looking for tonight in my history didn't go back that far. I couldn't I couldn't get it couldn't get it out of my brokerage account. I know I traded it. Maybe I'll check another brokerage. I thought it'd be kind of fun to show you that. I know you want to party with me. Uh you want a tight fulcrum? Yeah, one of you guys pointed out, a little sloppy. So you want it to actually look like a bow tie itself to come together and spread out. I get a little bow tie on my bear. Let me show you what that would look like. It's probably all dirty. Okay, he weighs about 100 pounds. <laughs> Never mind. But I got a little, I got a little bear with a bow tie on. I'll, maybe I could uh, throw a picture and post. <laughs> uh, I did some. I messed up my, sh my shoulder or shoulders. I messed up my shoulder weightlifting, and I messed up the other one uh, day trading. <laughs> but that's another story. Early 2020 was the bottom of inflation. Okay, that's good to know. So ARLP was there. I got gotcha. you. Okay, makes sense. So what did we look for? Well, many of the same things you would look at in a normal setup. And as I've said before a thousand times, I did a show on stock selection. I thought I would bang it out pretty quick. Of course that is. And uh, I ended up with 14 hours total recordings. And someday I really need to dust that off and, and redo it. But there's not a whole lot has changed. I think the only thing would change really would just be the charts and then we get maybe some new stocks to trade maybe when market conditions improve a little bit i might do something like that if you bought the course before you'll have free access by the way anything i upgrade you get access to so what makes a good setup well a lot of the things i talked about in that course obviously and and we don't have 14 hours tonight and i don't think i can make it another 14 hours i've been here about 13 so far but there's a lot of little things you can know you can look for without having to go through the course. I mean, do go through the course, but make sure at the least you learn a couple of things like ability to trade cleanly instead of looking like an electrocardiogram. You ideally want sector backing, but with the transitional pattern, I don't worry about that too much because what you're going to see is is like, and I don't know if ARLP was a good example, but Back when those energies and coal stocks and all were bottoming, I'd be willing to bet that most of them were still in downtrends and a couple of these early leaders began to emerge. And that's what we're going to have to look for now. And, and maybe as George pointed out, because value becomes momentum, momentum becomes value, maybe technology stocks is where we're going to find our opportunities. But we don't have to sit there and watch technology all day long all we have to do is listen to the database right so ideally you want some sector backing a pullback is not really crucial 
in the bow tie, you only need a one bar pullback, one lower low and one lower high. And sometimes you just get a lower low. Those are early signals sometimes, and you could you could get a little bit more whips on that, but it also would stop you from uh, getting in too late. So those those are on a case by case basis, especially if it's a I'm trying to think what happens would cause that it'd be an inside day. So it would only be a lower high and not a lower low. And hopefully that makes sense. We could we could certainly pick it up next week if not. But you want some, and like the the jet blue one looked pretty good. It had an okay pullback to it. And the other thing is, it needs to ideally have a significant move from lows, and in general, it will. I might make an exception if something really, really got it got into a tight, 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 nice longer term base, and then kind of did like a stealthy bow tie. I think that would probably be. I think in hindsight, if it did a stealthy bow tie that was real tight. In hindsight, it would probably be like the most beautiful textbook setup in the world three or 400% later. So I wouldn't completely rule out a significant move from lows, but as a general statement, yeah, especially if you're not coming out that super long tight base, okay? Are we able to see other members' questions? Not here tonight, but in Facebook, obviously, you can see anything that gets posted is, is, uh, is open for debate, and that's what I think makes such a great group. Now, ideally, who brought up cup and handle? Craig brought up cup and handle. Good eye, Craig. You want a big, fat cup and handle, or as I just kind of alluded to, maybe like a saucer, you know, go back to Schaubacher and Edwards and McGee and those guys, and then uh, O'Neill actually popularized the cup and handle. But a lot of those patterns go way back in time. But like a long, long, long saucer just dies out. Greg Fruit, Greg Fruit, I'm getting by. Two of my friends mixed up, getting Greg Morse mixed up with Dick Fruth. I hope they're not watching tonight. They'll both have words with me. But uh, Dick Fruth wrote parabolic moves in something. I don't think, I think it's out of reach, which is a pretty good book. And initially, I just got busy at the time, and I was going to help him with the book. And I helped him a little, but not enough. And I feel bad about that. I just got busy. But initially, he thought the bow tie would fit in with, with his uh, longer term bottoming pattern that's a lot of the stuff that dick fruit does would be to find those longer term value stocks like that and he calls them tombstones if memory serves but anyway a big fat sauce would be great now it doesn't have to identify i always hate people to make the air quotes but it doesn't have to identify as a bow tie as long as it's some of the pattern like a first thrust which would be pretty cool and then uh I'm trying to remember exactly how a first kiss after daylight works. I'll have to remember that pattern. I think it's what, uh, 10 bars of daylight or Landry light, and then you, you have kiss of the moving average after a major low. But if you know that, uh, SWJ, if you know the rules, let me know, because I've already forgotten about that. And usually I have multiple patterns, but I'll see the first thrust or the bow tie or whatever, like the jet blue, for instance, I didn't even have my moving averages plotted tonight. I saw the first thrust because I always start with a blank chart. And I'm like, you know what? I bet that's a bow tie. In fact, I know it's a bow tie. And it was a little sloppy, but, you know, it's a bow tie nonetheless. Okay, so 10 bars. Yeah, I think that, I think you're right. So it's uh, major low, 10 bars Landry light, pull back to moving average. Thanks, thanks for bringing that up. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to cover that. My next, you just gave me some fodder. For a little follow-up research and for a, a stock chart show. Was it the kiss of the 50? I don't think so. But use your favorite moving average, just like with the 220 EMA system. I'm now using the two, use it as a 230 EMA system. All right. So is this a good bow tie? I'll continue to clean my office while you guys talk amongst yourselves. So what do you think about this? It's a powerful vision and easy to remember. Yeah, the first kiss, thank you. Uh, Craig, I think it'd work on the 50. All right, anybody? Anybody want to chime in on this one? Meh, all right. I got a meh from John. No from SWJ. You guys. All right, why? No, no from Brian. Okay, all right. 
Frenchie. Frenchie says yes. All right, SWJ, good answer. He says overhead. Read my mind. Look at that big fat overhead. Good eye, Frenchie. Good eye. Great eye. The only thing is that overhead's a long ways away. This stock could more than double before hitting that overhead. So I, I, I think it looks okay. And look at that base. Look at that base. It's huge. A little tiny elbow slipped out there. We got at least two months or roughly two months of base. We got a serious thrust from lows, about 100% thrust from lows. Nice little pullback in here. You know what? A little sloppy. It took a little while to uh, cross over. But what did I just say? It might be another pattern too. So if it's a good looking first thrust and it's coming off a big base and the overhead resistance is a long ways away. I don't know. I think it's a good looking setup. Now, again, a little sloppy. Took it a while from, to go from red to green, but that's okay. It still sort of looks like a bow tie, right? So it's still in the spirit of the pattern. And it's more of a fat, big fat cup and handle and slash first thrust. Now, I don't trade off a big picture technical analysis, but a first thrust usually sets up within a cup and handle, and sometimes a bow tie sets up within a cup and handle, which makes it really cool. So I don't have to run some kind of pattern recognition. All I have to look for is my patterns, and once I find something I like, like this, I look for a cup and handle to back me up. I look for a big base to back me up. And I also, of course, look to see if there's any overhead supply. So you can see a little sloppy on those bow ties, but they did they did come together and spread out pretty quick. And and someone was saying earlier the spread or the fanning of them, and I agree. And I think that's something that I probably need to flesh out more. Is like if those moving averages spread out quickly, and you know maybe there's an indicator right there. And, I, and as I say, I learn a lot from these shows, but maybe the magnitude of that spread from the fulcrum will tell us something. So somebody write that down because I'm going to forget it tomorrow. But after a change, that can kind of give you an idea of the, the magnitude of that change. Remember, we're looking for a transition. And if you go all the way back to the left side of the chart, and if you find a broker that lets you trade off the left side of the chart, please let me know. You can see that completes the cup and handle pattern. So it's a beautiful cup and handle. So was it a good bow tie? I'm going to say, yes, right you are. This was one of our more sizable winners going back in time. This was an energy stock, CPE. And if you want to see these recommendations, to know that I'm just not pulling it out of thin air. And unfortunately, there's some there's some warts and all in there too, but this would worked out pretty damn good. And you can see nice trend from that bow tie trigger. Got stopped out for 499.72. Blew up that trade. You blew up that trade? You got out of it? <laughs> you were in and got out? So as you can see, nice, nice. That's a, based on a, although I did take this trade, I, I'll, I'll try to find the trades. I don't know if they go back to 2020. Like I said earlier, I couldn't find them. But 21, well, $1,000 roughly, or 925, I should say, on the first loaf, because we don't know it's going to go on forever. And then 22,000 on the second loaf. Stop out was below two. No, uh, no, not on this. This, this, okay, the question is was a stop out 10% below the 50 week high? No. The the only time you want to use that 10% line is in the S&P 500 on a weekly chart, okay? So this, and I, and I hate to rub salt in anyone's wounds, but it's been several people throughout my career that I've interacted with, several clients, and they'll tell me, well, I didn't take that CPE trade. Well, the IPT is going to tell you what our initial stop was. Our initial stop was 21%, okay? And it's like, well, I can't, I, I can't use a 21% stop. 
well, you know, you don't get no coke. <laughs> you know, like they said, Caddyshack. You have to use the stop that the market requires. So if we use a 10% stop in this one, we probably would have got knocked out on day one in the trade. It required a much wider stop. Now, keep in mind, we're not throwing caution in the wind. We're we're scaling our share size back and buying a small amount of shares. So in this case, we only bought 1,250 shares total. That sounds kind of like a lot, but it's only a $7 stock, and that's based on a hypothetical 100K account, although I did take this trade. I do remember it. Anyway, so you can see there's the percentage gains, better than a poke in the eye on that one. And, you know, look at this number here, just eyeballing it. Let's just say 23% total. So 23% on 100K, that's going to give you a pretty big cushion. And as long as you can kind of hold your head up above the water, you could end up having a pretty good year if you just catch one or two of these a year. All right. Anything, any questions or anything? I agree. That represents the volatility inside day. The bar of volatility is low for a real breakout. You were talking about when the, yeah, uh, well, you're looking kind of the micro. The the bar was, his point was that the bar, SWJ, his point was that the the, the bar was a, was a narrow range bar and due to break out. Yeah, that's kind of cool. Good eye. Smart bunch tonight. I'm very impressed. Even though I did try to trick you guys, but uh, you succeeded. All right, let's hop over to crypto real quick. All right, good point. Yeah, I like that. That's that's kind of a, a la Toby Crable. Okay, let me get uh, trading view up and running. Huge fan of stock charts, but when it comes to crypto, you guys were asking me what I like, and big fan of uh, trading view for that. No offense to the stock charts people, because they are good people and they are working hard to accommodate my needs. Okay. Um, Let's take a look at the biggies real quick. We can look at any little ones you want, and I'll do an RS uh, scan too. Let's take a look at. Well, let's show the. Let me show you that Elon real quick. So your 220 EMA would have been right here, and uh, mother father, <laughs> I wish I'd have seen it because it did kind of have a nice space. It had some overhead. I, you know, eh. but you know, we're talking nickels and dimes here. But at least I would have multiplied those nickels and dimes. Okay, let's take a look at Ethereum. So Ethereum, technically, yeah, te uh, Ethereum, as I think I said earlier, did trigger a 230 EMA, and so far it hasn't worked. Again, don't take these signals, don't take these signals mechanically, but you've got a pretty decent base here, rallying up. I'm a little bit more lenient when it comes to something like crypto. Here's my doggy coin. I don't know where my stop is, but it's probably fairly close on this one because, like an idiot, I miss this this beautiful 230 EMA back here. And then, you know, look at this base, how pretty. This was a beautiful base. Bigger the base, bigger the launch into space. Thought that was my speak, but that's Mr. Acaporo. <laughs> He's a trip, I think, as I said in my last show we wrote. He was, well, I hung out with him over the weekend and then um, <laughs> my wife and I hung out with him quite a bit. Then we rode to, we, uh, rode to the airport with him. The driver took us uh, both to the airport. Bitcoin, okay, so yeah, Bitcoin, as I alluded to earlier, did not trigger. Uh, technically, I guess it triggered if you didn't give it much wiggle room. I've got a 21,200 would be a good entry on Bitcoin. If it comes back to the EMA, okay, then no capital gets put into harm's way. Okay, all right, let me just show you something real quick. Earlier today, I dusted off my relative strength, and all I'm doing is sorting these by the strongest pairs, okay? And there's no pattern there. And I, some, I saw one of you guys earlier today was bummed out you missed a stock, but there was no pattern that fit the core methodology or any part of my methodology for that matter, maybe something that you do. And you were bummed out because you missed something. Well, there's nothing that I trade that would have gotten me into that one. And you can see there's a few of these that are taken off in here. So maybe crypto is waking back up. The, uh, as I've said at nausea, and the real cool thing is um, there was a, 
when, when let me rewind that what what's completely awesome and it was last thanksgiving so we're coming up on that one year anniversary but last thanksgiving i remember hitting seven initial profit targets while i was out drinking beer and frying turkeys one of the best days of my life drinking beer frying turkeys and trading crypto i mean it don't get any better than that huh <laughs> Uh, which one did okay? So earlier today, I was trying to play this, just trying to play a, a breakout, and I bought this one. There's no there's no pattern there. See, I tell you, don't trade unless there, there's a pattern, and there's no real pattern here. And I'll probably go ahead and stop out of this, but this would be a good one to maybe keep an eye out for um, a 230 EMA breakout on. Okay, any <laughs> I can get you an amen, amen. Yeah, it was a good day. Uh, boy, I tell you, whenever you feel like God like that, you just got to realize that it won't be long. You know, here's one thing that's pretty amazing. It's not that that amazing. Don't get too excited. But one thing that's kind of amazing is I, as an experiment, what I did like last, like I just said, last Thanksgiving, right around that time is every time I'd win on one of these, I would, uh, and I'm just do. I was just doing nickels and dimes. So it started to add up. You start hitting seven in one day. It's pretty good. And uh, at twenty percent, you know, about a thousand dollars in each one. So it's two hundred dollars. Uh, when you're up two hundred, you take a hundred off. And I would take fifty and leave in the native currency and pull aside. And and that pretty much got decimated. But to my surprise, it's actually starting to come back a little bit. Some of these ones like A B B C. It's starting to actually come back. Oops, what is it called? A, B, this one here, whatever that, whatever that is. But you see, this is beginning to take off, and I own a, a small amount of this, probably 50 bucks worth. You can say, oh, look, look at my trades back here, okay? Look at them trades, they're huge, okay? Got in here, flipped out here, and then got stopped out somewhere in between, and then during that process, 50 bucks went to, and look, we've almost made it back. That's kind of cool. My thinking was, and my hoping was, I would get into like the next sheave or whatever the stupid shitcoin du jour was that took off. <laughs> Paul says, there's always a piece of humble pie waiting for you. No kidding, huh? I probably should have like a, it's another thing, you know, probably should have like a little gauge in my in my office that every morning, you know, walk in and set it to where I am. And, you know, when I'm up a few thousand dollars, like set it to like, you know, whatever, 10. And, uh, pay attention to that you know yeah it's 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 all in your head man trading's all in your head okay uh any more questions on crypto i'm not seeing anything that really that's really jumping out at me at the moment and you know again you know getting back to, getting back to that 230 ema and some of the stuff i'm just seeing as i'm talking that's why i like doing this but notice even though it's kind of at high levels it did make this big old fat base and then it took off. So your 230 EMA would have gotten you in right about there, 20 cents, 20 and a half cents, and then nice little run so far. But yeah, I'm. this has got me excited. This and recent stuff has got me excited to get back into crypto and start paying attention. It only matters when it matters. You got to do your homework every day. And again, that's not to beat the dead horse, but that's what kills me with the trading service is it's seeing all these people, not my longer term clients, because they know it comes with the territory and they're just like, well, you know, it sucks, Dave, but uh, we'll just hang out and, and wait for things to get better. You know, maybe that mystery chart will work out. Who knows? But I hate for newer people to come in and give up right before everything begins to take off. Craig says all on the dollar. Yeah, you know, I might have to dust off my intermarket technical analysis book if I didn't give it away. But lately, there's a high correlation, inverse correlation between stocks and the dollar. And I guess that would make some sense because there's definitely an in, inverse correlation between stocks and commodities, um, between the dollar and commodities. I got stocks and commodities in my head. Because the cheaper the dollar is, the more dollars it takes to buy the commodity. The more expensive the dollar is, did I get that right? Maybe it's just the opposite. Yeah, if the dollar drops, commodities are going to go up. Okay. 
because it's going to take more and more dollars to buy the commodities and commodities are priced in dollars now right now i think where's the euro anybody know i might have it in here dollar six or something i can't tell i'm not sure off of this chart is the euro less than a dollar right now or is that just the way this shapes up wow holy crap i didn't know that wow but there was a time where it's like uh if they ever re-denominated crude oil and something like the euro it would be pretty ugly it's time for uh, you read my mind dang it get out of my head it's time for euro vacation no kidding huh shoot my first trip i guess this is my first trip to europe my first trip to italy and i think we went to switzerland on that trip it was almost two to one it was brutal but look at that i had no idea the euro was that low i had been actively trading forex in a while in fact my, my account i think it's it's not frozen but i think they got it locked because i haven't made a trade in a long time i think i need to call them and have them unlock it i might have to do that all right let's uh let's jump into this market okay we talked about the dollar now here's the thing with intermarket technical analysis i know i got a little tripped up with what does what but in intermarket technical analysis only matters when it matters and many 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 years ago it worked a lot better than it does now. And now it tends to decouple now and then, but you can pay attention to these relationships and when they when they matter, when one market is going up and the other one tends to go down, it's good to pay attention to both of them. But when they decouple or they just go back and forth, then you, you stop, you gotta go stop looking at them, okay? Because they no longer work. And, I was, I try to avoid like online forums and all, but I was in a forum a while back and some guy was, I showed him, I put out my bow tires or something, e minis or whatever. And he's like, no, no, all you have to do is when the dollar goes up, you buy e minis. And I'm like, oh, that'll work until it don't. You know, that's what's, that's a church of what's happening now. And that's fine, but just realize that that's going to decouple at some point. Okay. But yes, it is a general relationship that tends to work. Learning relationships, but then don't bother with them when they're not working. Okay, S&P 500, today's a bit of a bummer. We're back below the bow ties. Notice that the, the EMAs have turned down, as they will, as soon as price crosses below. Thanks to Greg Morris for teaching me that. The simple has not turned down yet, but it will soon, once you get a few more down days or a few more days below it, it's gonna start catching up with price. And going to watch last week's presentation, I talked a lot about why I use the simple instead of an exponential with the bow ties. So, uh, you know, what we were talking about earlier, the spread out thing, so, you know, maybe maybe measure the spread out. Look at the fulcrum here, even though it's not off of all time highs, but that's kind of interesting. The spread out was pretty quick. Uh, let's take a look real quick. Oh, by the way, start asking, you guys wanna talk about some stocks. I'm, I'm nearly done with this. Bonds are actually in a pretty serious downtrend, as you can see, and have been for a long time. Bonds down, rates up, right? NASDAQ, boy, NASDAQ is a bummer. All three moving averages turned down. All three moving averages in downtrend proper order, okay? They never did get to uptrend proper order. Like one of you guys was pointing out the, the Dow, which I don't pay a lot of attention to, but maybe I should. The Dow actually looks pretty damn good. Okay, you got a bow tie. It's not off all-time lows, but it's on. It's off multi-year lows. It's okay. I should have thrown that one out as one of my bow ties. But uh, nuts in the S and P 500. Obviously, the S and P never did get to what well, it got to uptrend proper order, which I guess technically it still is in. Is that correct? Am I right on that? The 10 is greater than the 20. And the no, the twenty is less than thirty, so it's not an uptrend proper order. See, that's where land, that's where that little Landry light indicator would really help when you're starting to kind of get down to the granular level. All right, so Nasdaq not looking too good. Pretty serious downtrend attack there. Take a look at like a weekly chart. Look, just doesn't look pretty, does it, huh? So I was getting, I'm not gonna say bullish, but I was starting to feel a little bit better about the market. But then what happened? We started going down again. 
you know, uh, Larry Williams has got me listening or, or like just I've always rolled my eyes. At these guys like got to buy gold, got to buy gold. We got inflation. We got this. We got that. We got politics. You got to buy some gold. Well, got wars, too. You know, what's gold doing? Well, draw your big blue arrow. So far, it's heading lower. So that's not a pretty chart unless you like downtrends. Right now, I did find a little support down here. But for the most part, gold's still on pretty serious downtrend. And Larry Williams, the reason I mentioned him is, uh, and I said this in tonight's service, is uh, I heard him say a while back, he's like, well, you know, gold, you got to get gold, you got to buy gold, you got to buy gold, but they sure want your dollars for gold. If gold was that great and they had all this gold, they wouldn't be so excited to sell it to you. My father-in-law once said, why would they sell it to you? It's like, well, yeah, at that point, gold was going up and he wanted to... It, they ask me about gold, you know. <laughs> my in-laws ask me what I think and then tell me how I'm wrong, you know. <laughs> What's that called? Ask Cole, A-S-K-H-O-L-E, Google that. Be careful with the, how you word it though. You might get something totally different. It's something you don't want in your search history. Where where you can, okay, uh, let's see. Where you, well, when you can, did you happen to notice the extreme CPCE put call ratio last night. I don't I don't believe in the put call ratio. Um, you know, and, and maybe somebody can like change my mind on that. Some very, very smart people who know options told me they never could find a use for the put call ratio. And I forget all their reasoning, and maybe if I think long enough and hard enough, I could. Um, but yeah, I don't I don't know. I don't look at the put call ratio and, you know, maybe there's something there, but, 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 you know, you got to realize I'm going way back to the nineties, the people I knew in the nineties that, that were pretty serious option traders, uh, the guy that worked with Saliba, uh, Joe Corona, Tony Saliba, one of the market wizards. Saliba's a nice guy, by the way. Okay. You believe the same thing, but it's very extreme. It's still too early for stock charts to publish today's, what do you think about a short series short squeeze tomorrow? Okay, we'll come back to that one in one second. Uh, energies. Energies looking pretty good in here. And they're not too far from these. We've surpassed this high here, which was a big old fat kind of retrace fake out. But now they're trying to go for all-time highs. And I think once they go from to all-time highs, psychologically, that buy that buying will beget more buying because people will be thinking they missed the boat metals and mining not so hot just kind of bottoming out but eh, eventually you know we might get some nice setups here if it just continues to bottom out forever fine with me i'm a patient man i wait for setups right not a whole lot else to report just as i've been saying a nausea some areas like financials although now they look a little bit better than peace kind of look like the market itself drugs kind of backed off a little bit after trying to get through this resistance. But they're kind of wide and loose, although lately they've been pretty strong in here. Biotech's a little wide and loose, was trying to get his act together, came back in today, but still a little too wide and loose to get excited about. And let's just take a look at the semis because we're talking about technology. Semiconductor's in a pretty serious downtrend. And this last little bottoming action we saw in a lot of areas, they were one of the laggards there, so they really didn't get going. Gold won't have the USD dollar down yields drop top. Yeah, I mean, you would think that uh, the inflation would, uh, the inflation scare would push gold higher, but then it's a, it's a tricky world. I mean, that's the problem when you start trying to put all these pieces together. It's like, well, inflation, gold goes higher, but you're going to have rising interest rates, which is going to, you know, stop the inflation. And, and maybe, you know, why is gold not going higher? I don't know. You might have too many, might have too much paper gold out there, so to speak. All right, let's um, take a look at individual stocks now. CPCE, CPCE, what is this? Counterpoint. I don't know what this is. Oh, it's a fund. CPCE. I don't have that. Oh, you're talking about some sort of a put call index? Do we have that in? Uh, I don't even know if that's in telechart. Put call 
Yeah, I don't know how I would pull that up. So, Brian, uh, interesting observation. But uh, get back with us on Facebook if you don't mind. Let us know what happens. That'd be kind of cool. One back from March. RES, RES, blast from the past. Ooh, look at that. Look at that stock. It's huge. That's a good looking stock. Um, I kind of hate when they rally back up to their old highs like this. But I might make an exception here. That's a good looking stock, Mark. Look at that nice persistent trend. Yeah, that's that's pretty good looking. I'd like to see a little bit deeper pullback. That's pretty good. You know, stuff like uh KLXC, I've been watching that. You know, and if this one begins to pull back, I think that could be quite the stock. HV one oh seven, just absolutely crazy, but that's a good looking stock too. Just throw that out. I A K, I A K. Back. Yeah, it's okay, Craig. Um, you know, it's a little wide and loose. It's kind of hard for me to get excited about it. It must be foreign or could be foreign. Lots of gaps. It's dollar sign CPCE. Dollar sign. Oops. Dollar sign CPCE. Oh, NASDAQ. So you say the put call. Yeah, we'll have to look at that later. Dollar sign. Oh, you're talking about. CPCE. You talk about it in stock charts. Yeah. Stock charts has a pretty amazing database. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Uh, I'll take a look at that. Yeah. Not enough time tonight. We're nearly out of time. All right. S A I C pullback off first thrust. S. That's going to be what? A trucking company? S A I C. No, something new. Yeah. You know, now keep in mind, stocks can change their personalities. This thing is just wide and loose and all over the place, but. It's starting to get its act together, and I'd be willing to bet if we looked at a weekly chart, eh, it's still kind of ugly on a weekly. I'd be willing to bet if we looked at a monthly chart. <laughs> Let's see what it looks like on a monthly. Well, I'd be willing to bet if we looked at a yearly, a quarterly chart. <laughs> no, it does look oh, poorly. <laughs> yeah, it looks a little better on a quarterly, huh? Isn't that crazy? But yeah, that's a nice, that's a decent base and a nice breakout. You know, one thing I have to be careful of is I do try to look for perfection, obviously, in my setups, but this is not a market that provides perfection. And do I wait for perfection or do I take something that's kind of good enough? In a case like this, it might be good enough, George. Um, volume's a little low, okay? I like to see a little more volume. Is it just me or... Does it take a little bit more volume nowadays? I used to be able to trade 100K stocks, but it seems like you, 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 these 200K stocks could be a little thin. HV is a slight bit low on that, but it's, that's a good looking stock. So maybe on a pullback, it might be worth a shot. I'm buying Canadian dog, 2,000 Canadian, 1,500 USD. <laughs> what kind of dog? Uh, let me guess. It's something that herds other dogs, other, other animals, not other dogs. All right, any more uh, stocks you guys want to look at real quick? We got a couple of more minutes we can uh, spare if you need it. If not, while we're in pass, I want to thank everybody for coming. I appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedules to be here. I had a blast tonight. This was a fun show. And uh, maybe I just need to um, get you guys more involved because I, I learned a lot in the process. So I learned something tonight from this whole thing. And uh, I, please let me know on Facebook. There's something you want me to cover and do a deep dive on and all. It'll give me something to work on as opposed to watch the markets all day and go, oh, crap, i got to put together a show at the last minute. <laughs> all right, CPCE is the most extreme going back six years. Wow, 1.14. Wow, you know, I don't know if you can get a question into, um, you know what I'll do? Can you email me, Brian? Dave at DaveLander.com. I'll, I'll see if I can get uh, Dave Keller on that and see what, see what he says, because that would be interesting, because I don't do a lot of put call work. All right. Uh, as usual, obviously, thanks again for coming tonight. I appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedule. Everybody have a great weekend if we don't talk again. And uh, all you guys and girls that are here for uh, the Facebook group, we'll see you tomorrow. Thank you so much.